Hey, welcome back to Five Lace Garage, and today is really going to be awesome because we get to actually work on the Tacoma again. It has been a while since we've been on this guy. Now, one thing that we're gonna, we did last time was actually build a front bumper. Built it out of network racks. It works great. Now it's time to actually put the rear bumper on. Now, if you saw my previous episode, we got a rear bumper from Hook Road. Uh, they sent it over here. We're going to be testing it out for them, giving them some feedback, and uh, installing it on our Tacoma. Now, why are we actually putting a rear bumper on? Kind of touched it before. Well, I'm going to show you again because I think it's redoxless. All right, this is our 2019 Toyota Tacoma. It's got a three and a half inch lift. It's got 285, 75, uh, 16 tires on it. We built some sliders. We built uh, catalytic converter protection. Got a tunnel cover. We got the front bumper. We got everything on this guy, except a rear bumper. Look at that. That is flimsy. It is cheap, crazy, chrome plated plastic i don't like it i want it out of here so what we're actually going to do today is get rid of this thing look it's even coming apart so on this side i'm get a bit of light um i came off a rock came off tire boom hit me right here all this is buckled up i kind of bent it back a little bit i got a little gap there anyway I hit the bumper and the bumper did nothing and actually, you can see, I got a much good, bigger gap on this side. So thanks to Hook Road to setting us up uh, and we can finally get rid of this bumper. Now, originally I said that I wanted to build my own and I still do, but I don't have that kind of time. If you can see around the shop, I got way too many projects going on. So we're just gonna be able to bolt this thing on, go out and go and actually have the protection that we need in order to you know, keep the Tacoma. It's still my daily driver, but anyway, we don't have a lift, so we're down on the on our backs today, but it should be fine. But these are all the things you're going to need if you're going to do it yourself. So when you go to Hook Road, look up on the website, figure out what vehicle you have, go ahead and order it. Uh, they got a Black Friday sale coming up. They got Cyber Monday coming up. Thanksgiving's coming. Boom. Check it out, Hook Road. But this is what we're going to need. All right, we're just going to go from one side to the other. So this stuff actually came out of the box. So this is your license plate holder. You got your two big brackets, nice, thick carbon steel. We do have our bumper with integrated uh, backup lights. We also, and actually if you don't want to use these for backup lights, you can um, go ahead and hook it up to a relay, put a switch inside, and then you can actually have real lights if you really wanted to while you're off-roading. Uh, we're going to hook this up to our 7-pin connector, which actually goes right here in the bumper, and be able to, as soon as you put it reverse, these will light up and then you'll have these lights plus the lights on the back of the truck and we should be able to see what's behind us. We do have an integrated uh, step right here on the ends. If you have sensors, you can go ahead and pull these out and put your sensors right in there. It is all plug and play and it should work just fine. Uh, so we have, uh, try to be organized when you're actually doing something like this. We do have all of the hardware that we're going to need. Uh, little washers, lock washers, we have a little Allen wrench, Allen screws, grade 8 uh, lock washers, grade 8 nuts, grade 8 bolts, whole lot of washers there, all grade 8. Um, also, I'm old, I gotta have my glasses. Uh, we have our instructions. Now, the, on the instructions, you have everything that you're gonna need that's supposed to be inside the box. Look through all your parts and pieces to make sure you have all your pieces. Now, as far as tools go, this is all you need. This is it. To take it off, put all this stuff in there, this is all you're pretty much going to need. If we need anything else, I'll let you know as soon as I start getting into it. But you need a 13 millimeter, a 19 millimeter, you need a ratchet, uh, you need a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. I went ahead and have a, uh, a socket style, and then you also have a 19 millimeter socket. So uh, I just have a little deck deck, as some of them call it. But it's an impact driver, uh, just to be able to use some of the stuff might actually speed it up. And if I can't reach it, you got your ratchet right there. Now you're also going to need a light because we are on the ground. I do not have a lift. Uh, if you have a lift and you want to sponsor the channel, uh, please send it over. Anyway, all right, enough jibber jabbering. I'm going to get my creeper out. We're going to get underneath. We're going to actually get this piece of garbage plastic thing out of here and put on the hook road steel beef bumper. 
Yeah. Whoa, man. Um, no complaints on Hulk Road yet. Complaints on the Toyota. All right, in order to get this whole bumper off, there are a few extra tools that you're gonna need. Now, all the tools I told you about earlier, they all go for the Hook Road bumper. This is actually gonna come from Toyota specifically. Now, you're gonna need a little pry bar. This picked this up years ago. It works great, it is metal, it does not bend. You're gonna need a 12 millimeter. You're gonna need some really long needle nose pliers. It does help, you can use it with a screwdriver as well. And a big long screwdriver, uh, a 10 mil for your license plate, and a 12 mil socket. All right, we are at the rear. I uh, got most of it off already, just so I can understand how exactly it's put together. So this little guy right here comes in handy when you are trying to take off these little guys. So these are little uh, push clips. They are plastic, they are brittle. And Toyota loves to use them. Okay, so you have one there, you have one there, there, there. Same thing on the other side. I've got a few on the inside here as well. Now, before you can get this plastic piece off, you have to get a couple other things off first, as in your uh, light fixture. Uh, they just have two little clips right there, one on either side. That just pulls right out. That's where the screwdriver comes in very handy if you can't get your hand in there. So that kind of comes out, stick that over to the side. You also have these little guys. Now this is for your license plate light. Uh, same thing, you got two clips, one on either side. That's where the long screwdriver comes in because you'll need to climb way up there, hopefully you can see it, uh, and actually get this guy out. So I re recommend clipping both clips, pull it out, and then unplugging the electrical connection because you don't want to break it. All right. So, uh, you pretty much have everything off here. Now you have to get this guy off. In order to get this guy off, you have, uh, yeah, you have two little clips right here, which they look just like that. Fits right in there, you unclip those, you unclip all of these, and then you got one bolt here, pull that out, that's a 12 mil. Pretty much everything on here has been, been a 12 mil. And then you just kind of pop it off. Now, if you look on the inside, they have all these little clips that you have to take off. Now, you can either reach your hand up there and try to get it out there, or just muscle it up. You're not using it again because you got the hook road bumper. You don't need it anymore. All right, so I'm gonna get the rest of this guy off. Uh, there's, a, there's a bolt there, bolt here. That's why you had to get the plastic off. Bolt, 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 bolt. Take all that off. I know, it's a lot of bolts for plastic. Then, you should be able to pull this right off. Now, don't just rip it off because, now since it's off, you can actually get to them, but you have little clips for all of your electrical connections. So be careful, turn out the scratch of paint. All right, there you go. Now it's off. You know, this thing doesn't weigh anything and it's flimsy. I guess that's what you get for putting plastic on it. Uh, anyway, everybody, everything is off and you are ready for the next step. Just clean up your mess because you just got road crud all over your floor. All right, we're ready for the next step. And what we're going to do is actually connect up the license plate holder. Now, it does come with... It pretty much all assembled. I took parts of it off just to be able to get to it a little bit easier, but this is what we got to hook up now. Okay, so we have our, whoops, we have our license plate light uh, bracket right there, and we are using a little screw. So we've got five mil hex with a 10 mil little nut. It's really easy, it's all in the instructions. But we are going to tighten this baby up. All right, then cinch that down. Hopefully it is in the right location. Uh, you can test out your license plate as well as your connections to make sure it's on there tight. Bam! All right. 
So you do have your next bracket here. This is actually gonna put your license plate on. Uh, so we're gonna connect up your backing plate and this right here will actually keep it. You can slide it back and forth and this will lock it into place. Now this one right here does have the hex, well the square fits in the square. Don't put it round and around, square and square. All right, now this particular step, you can put your license plate on there. I'm not gonna put it on there just because I'm doing a video. I'm gonna come back later and actually put that on at another time. But you have your hex heads and you also have your special little brackets in the back. Now these, you just put it with your finger once you get your license plate on. There you go. So once you can put your license plate up there, you can adjust it back and forth, up, down, whichever one you really want to. Uh, in order for it to be able to be perfect because it's got to look good, right? All right, next on the instructions. We need to flip it over and put some brackets on. So you have your bracket. This is going to sit on just like that. So this bracket will be down here towards the bottom. Okay, so now we need to put our washers. So we have three washers. Now this is very important, we don't want this thing to fall off, so we have three lock washers. Then we have three grade eight nuts. All right, as you can see on these <clears throat> that are already on there, it does have the coating that's on there. You can actually strip that off or you can just let the nut do it for you. All right, got all the brackets on. I got everything kind of cinched down a little bit, just enough where it won't fall off. Now I'm not going, going to tighten it up yet because I want to get it on the truck first. And the reason why I want to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I can move it around and I'm not fighting it the whole time. Because as you can tell, I'm out here by myself and you can do it by yourself too. Woo, got me sweating, man. All right, so last bit of bolts, last bit of uh, washers. Lock washers. Let's take it to the truck. All right, it's pretty much on. I'm getting stoked already. But let's take a look at what we have. Now, make sure your body lines are nice and straight. Now, right now I do have it kind of loose. I haven't tightened anything up yet because I wanted to make sure that it fits. It goes all the way across. And then this side here, there you go, moves right in. Now, I do have a little bit of body damage on that side. So it's not going to line up 100% because I do take this off room. There you go. Look at that. Tight, tight. All right, that's looking good. What we gotta do now is actually tighten all the bolts, make sure everything is straight. So, what do we have to do now? Uh, what's up with creepers? They creep when you don't want to and they don't when you want them to. Anyway, uh, so you have two bolts here. You got one bolt there. Those are the three that we already took, put on. Uh, so we're gonna tighten all those up. I'm gonna start with these, which will bring it in, and then these right here will actually move it back and forth in order for it to align with your body mounts or your uh, body panels. Once you get all that tightened down, then we get to do electrical, which would be your license plate light, your plugs, and also, don't forget your lights, which we're going to be splicing right into this guy here. So anyway, let's get this guy rolling. I need a 19 millimeter. God damn it, fuck ass. God, I wish I had a fucking camera guy or girl.
All right, this is where your 19 millimeters come in. Go ahead and tighten everything down. We'll be right back. All right, everything is tightened down and it is stout. Take a look. All right, so we still have the receiver hitch, so you can still hook up your uh, trailers. You got your license plate. You also have your connection for there. Uh, now I didn't put them in yet because I wanted to show you as I did it. Also, here's your here's your step. Everything is great. Not moving at all. She is up there. Now, one thing you do need to do is once you get everything tightened down, slowly open up your tailgate. That is a tight fit. And that's a tight fit, but it does fit. There you go. It cuts really close, but it does not touch. And now since I have a straight bumper up here, I can definitely tell how bad I hit this corner. Now, if you do take your truck off-road, you're going to have run into some fitment issues that you're going to have to take care of. Uh, can't blame Hook Road for it. They're, using, they're probably scanning a brand new one. This one's been a little bit, just a little bit abused. But we're going to do a whole lot more abusing once we get on the trail with this bumper. All right, we are ready to put everything back together. Uh, the first thing you really want to do is just take your electrical wire, electrical cable, and poke it right through. Now it does have one little clip on one side. You cannot mess it up. Uh, go ahead and clip it into your light. Now, if you look over here on your, there you go. You got a little indentation there. Orient, oh, where's that? there it is. Orient your little slot with that indentation and it should fit right in. There you go. It's almost like they meant to do it. I'm gonna get this guy in and then we'll get the, uh, the rest of the wiring going. Alrighty, we are all taped up nice and neat, mostly. Uh, and don't forget your little cap on the end. This actually keeps some of the strain off of the wires and onto the actual plug itself. So now all we have to do is plug that in then into there and the two wires that are dangling, route those over and connect them up to your lights. Now we're just going to be hooking up the positive and then the negative is just going to go to the frame and that should be sufficient to be able to back up and use these as backup lights as well. All right, so this is the wiring that we are using for uh, the light. I uh, just put my ground, just kind of scraped that off and actually put a nice little grommet there, taped it up and then tie wrapped it all the way across. Don't be afraid to use tie wraps. Uh, taped it, same thing with this guy and everything is actually connected through the seven pin connector. All right, don't be afraid to actually cut into the wiring harness. It's not that big of a deal. I get a really good butt connectors and they will be okay. Just don't go out and get those little cheapy, cheapy things because water will actually get in and it's not gonna be that great. We do need to have a waterproof. This is an off-roader. We're gonna be dinging this thing up. Thanks again to Hook Road for actually providing this thing and um, we'll see how it goes. We're gonna go for a trip next week. All right, everything is in, all the wires are in, and everything is connected. Take a look. All right, so we got the LEDs right here. These are more spotlights, so they are going way back here. Then you also have the factory ones. Now, the factory ones are okay. They're not the greatest. Now, these guys right here, both of those worked out great, except for that one. My bulb blew out. I probably blew that out before I even started this thing. But did you know that that bulb there is still the same one that goes off of a 1980 CJ5. Anyway, let's crawl underneath and actually show you the wiring real quick and then we'll wrap this up tomorrow when it's daylight so we can see this baby in the daylight. That's pretty good for some backup lights. Yo. Yeah. Alright, it's a brand new day and the bumper is still on. It hasn't fallen off. I guess I did something right. But it looks great. Uh, it is, seems to be very functional. It is definitely so much better than this plastic thing that we took off. I'm not exactly sure how that thing is supposed to be protecting the back end of this truck. But we have a new steel one on there. We're excited. We're ready to go. But I want to recap 
to make sure you have all the tools you need in order to do this job. All right, this is all you're gonna to need to actually install your bumper. You're gonna need a 19 millimeter, and you need a wrench and a ratchet. You're also gonna need a 13 millimeter, and then you're gonna need a five millimeter Allen wrench. That's it, that's all you need to actually put it on. Now, taking the Toyota part off, you need a couple extra tools. You're gonna need a little pry bar to get all of the little plastic fasteners off. You're also gonna need a 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, flathead screwdriver, and just in case you need a little bit more finesse, you do get a little die grinder to actually finagle things to actually get it off and get things back on properly. Um, also had to use the hammer uh, just because I do go take this thing off road and I dinged it up a little bit. But that's the way it goes, it's what we do. Anyway, and the deck tack uh, comes in handy to actually get everything off. Now this is actually what we took off. So it is two pieces like we saw in the video and this is plastic. That's plastic. You take this off. And then you, you do have metal, but that is like tin foil. Don't know what exactly it's made out of, but that guy is a lot stronger than that guy. All right, hopefully this video actually helps you be able to put your new bumper on. Thanks a lot, Ho Hook Road, to actually sending this over so we can actually test it out. Later on this week, we're going to really test it out and actually take it out on the trail. I'm sure it's not going to look like this when we get back because we kind of bang into it a little bit more. There are a couple other extra things that we want to do to this truck to actually put a little bit more protection. Uh, one of them being the quarter panels back here in the back. Uh, the bumper does protect it if it's a big rock. If it's a small rock or thing, we're going to actually still get into the quarter panel. So I have some pipe that I'm going to actually put on there a little bit later on. You'll see that here on the channel. So go ahead and subscribe and let us know what you think and what we need to do to this to come to actually make it a little bit more trail worthy now you don't need a lot of tools all you need is a truck go ahead and get a bumper from hook road be able to put it on there easy peasy no problem uh, there was a slight little finagle things that i had to do and actually get this thing on there but they are extremely minor and you should be able to do it without a problem so anyway take it easy have fun enjoy yourself get out there Fix up your truck, get it out there on the trail, and check out Hook Road for all the things you might need for your truck. Jeep, Dodge, Toyota, doesn't make a difference. Check them out. HookRoad.com.